Hi, I'm here with Caesar, and this is just a follow-up to the Bianca story from yesterday. And he reached out to me and just wanted to make sure some things didn't get twisted around. So, Caesar, when did you first meet Bianca? About two months ago. And what was what was your general impression of all this? Like her and the situation. Just feel free to go into it. Uh, my personal take was that she was troubled, but, and I knew to a decent extent, but to this exact extent that I found out recently, I did not know. Uh, the main point that I'd like to make to everyone is that everyone seems to think that people knew and that I think some people have suggested that we were keeping her secret or something. Uh, no one knew the full extent of what was going on, and the people that did know things we're talking about it. One of the main points that I wanted to bring up, and I'm going to bring this up later today in a different interview that's scheduled, is that her mother had already called the cops on Brandon. Oh, could you uh, explain why the cops were called in the first place? Uh, harassment of some sort. I mean, the, the details we're getting are very important, but it's it's all coming. We're all putting it together as, as I mean, very quickly. So even I don't know fully what's going on, and even the people that know don't know what's going fully, going on fully. But this was a man that she uh, that had already been reported about. It was true that her mother had already called the cops. As far as I know, that her mother had already reported him for the harassment. And the other main point is that people were acting, and this is the only thing that really bothers me, is that people were acting like she was a terrible person, and she wasn't. Those screen caps that people are posting from her are old. She was literally 15 at the time. What would I'm not you even say, sure. What would gone. you say is, uh, you know, from, you talk to her, right? Like a face-to-face, -face, I mean, not like a face-to-face, -face, but like, you know, Discord to Discord sort of thing, right? No, I, I mean, I live in Utica. I knew her in real life. Oh, um, okay. So you, you did see her face-to-face. -face. Yeah. Uh, um, so... From someone who got the chance to meet her, what would you say she was like? She was very sweet, and she was very lively, and she was very fine without, I hate to say it, the drugs. It really was that, and whenever those were involved, things got bad, but these men that people are talking about that she mistreated were older men preying on her. That screen cap that everyone has been posting of her telling this dude to fuck off, whatever it was, he was some 20-year-old preying on her, and she would tell me these stories that of these weirdos. She was 15 with a mental disorder. I don't understand how you think it's her responsibility to take care of herself, to keep herself safe, around older men, there's people literally saying, oh, she deserved it for how she treated men or what she did with men. These were older men. These were fully adult males. Wow. Uh, what would you say, you know, the overall, like, dilemma was that she got caught up in some internet business? I think the overall problem was a few things. I think it was primarily uh, the drugs. I think the internet definitely... Uh, didn't do any good either. It was a double-edged sword. I think that people are acting like people knew and didn't do anything. We didn't really know. Uh, she talked about these people she had issues with, but when she told me about those stories, she talked about them in a past tense. In addition to that, I've had friends like this before, and, you know, with them, one, everything is so constant that it's not like you can report everything that they're doing. And two, even if you did, you'd quickly lose contact with them. It's, it's treading a fine line with people like this. And even knowing how difficult it was going to be, we tried to help. We tried to do everything within our power to help, but not everyone had all this information at the time. I certainly did. And I think that as far as I can tell, she compartmentalized things so that no one could put, or so that not everyone could put together everything that she was doing. There's another post um, from her uh, about her selling, you know, pictures or whatever, you know, basically CP. Uh, it, 
somehow people think that we knew that we somehow people think that we saw that page or whatever and we were just like we just kind of ignored it we didn't know how to we didn't know what to do to keep track of this girl and even if i wanted to help there was only so much i could have done and her parents that ultimately her parents or her family was aware of everything that she was doing so that we really didn't i at least i didn't personally see a point in trying to report everything to the police when her parents she was already on house arrest at one point she was in and out of house house of good shepherd which is like a local homeless shelter thing everything that could have been done as far as we could tell was being done for this girl and so as far as i could tell my only responsibility in that situation was to try and be a good friend to her and try and give her someone normal to hang out with that didn't do drugs and stupid shit like that and that's what i did so what was it like leading like you know in the the hours leading up to her death and the fallout from that i know it's hard to you know kind of relive that but if you could take people through what that was like i think it would be very important right now one more time i'm not even thinking straight what was it like leading up to her death and then finding out she died well the sad thing is is leading up to it everything was good in that last few weeks she, as far as I know, I think I heard this actually from her family that she was finally off drugs. And she was very kind in those last few weeks. And she really was a normal girl without those goddamn drugs. You have no idea. It's what really bothers me is without those drugs, she was literally like any other girl. I hung out with her. She came over. We hung out by my pool, whatever. And then we played Minecraft, I think, the day after. Uh, she was just in a good mood. She was chatty. She wasn't like she was before. When I first met her, she was heavily on drugs, and it clearly heavily affected her. What kind of and drugs? It, I'm not going to go into the specifics of okay. what she was doing. Well, uh, weed, a lot of weed. Uh, I think uh, benzos. I, I can't remember everything, but she was doing a lot of things that she shouldn't have been doing. And... What people don't understand is, especially with those kids, you know, it it destroys their brains. And, you know, these people really aren't the same people that they are without them. I mean, even the weed I didn't like. I know everyone thinks that weed is such a fine drug, uh, you know, and that it's chill and that it's not so bad. And I we, that didn't do any good for her either. That was how a lot of these men had control of her was through drugs and through offers of drugs it's such a cancer on society and such a cancer on her life you 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 have no idea but my main point again is she was a really nice girl and it was really those those drugs that did it to her so do you think that had a role going into the concert and afterward yes well brandon apparently she knew that Brandon was bad news and she had had bad experiences with him before he left her stranded once this is an important story to know okay. he left her stranded uh, I guess a lot of people think that we as her friends like weren't didn't get involved enough or I had no idea um, I had no idea she asked me she she, met, she mess, excuse me she messaged me on Snapchat saying hey can I get money for a ride back to Utica I was like fuck no man figure it out yourself cuz I didn't know what was going on I was just like man I'm not just going to pay you cuz you're too dumb to get back to Utica uh, I didn't know that she got cuz she uh, she didn't tell me what actually happened she just said that her and her friend were stuck there and that her friend like that she got ditched by another friend or something How far uh, away how far away was she Uh I forget I can get that to you later. Uh, I, I forget where she was. But, you know, afterwards, I said, I felt a little bad a few minutes later, and I said, hey, if you really have an issue and you need to get home, I will pay for you. And she said, no, 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 I already got it. But she never told me that what happened was Brandon had offered her drugs. And that was always how he got her to hang out with him, even though she didn't want to, was offers of free drugs. He drug her up. And then bad things would happen. Sometimes she didn't even want to do them. And she told me about this, I think. The last time I hung out with her, I'm pretty sure that's who she was talking about, that she would meet some guy or whatever, and that he would want her to drink hard liquor and stuff and then do other shit. And I was like, yeah, that's not good. And I, I, didn't, I, I mean, it's like, as far as I knew, 
I, I thought that this was because I had met some of her friends before. I thought this was like some of her fucking idiot friends that she knew from high school that weren't too dangerous. I didn't know it was some guy like this. If I knew, I would have been more involved, but she made sure that I didn't know specifically. Okay. But, Can you describe uh, Brandon? Uh, I don't know him. I only know him through uh, these stories I've been told. I never met him. Oh. But... The police, like, her friends had called the police for her before. Not me specifically, but, like, they tried to be as involved as they could be. You know, I know that it's easy to probably look at what I'm saying here and say, oh, man, you know, you guys really should have done more. And it's like, we tried to do as much as we could. Her parents even put her on basically house, I mean, house arrest. You know, she was not supposed to be out past certain times and all that, and they wouldn't let her out for very long. Like, they tried to keep her on lock and key, and it just didn't work. Like, it, 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 we tried as hard as we could. But there was only so much we could do. Hell, I only knew her for two months. Like, what was I supposed to do? What, I, what would you say, like, you know, if you wanted to tell something to the world, you know, in conclusion here, what would you want them to know? I want them to know two things primarily. One, this... Uh, you know, I get, one, I get it. It's annoying when the media says, or reports the story and doesn't say anything about her, and then later on you find out all this stuff about her. I know it's annoying. I know because I lived, I've lived that life where you just study the news and you realize how bullshit the news is. But you're missing key details still. Like, I, I, I know how it's just easy to just get mad at the media and think that she's hiding, that, or that, I, I think that the general impression is, People think the media is hiding her lifestyle or whatever. That's really not true. One, the details all aren't out yet, even amongst the people that knew her, because we're still piecing it together. And, um, yeah, she really was not like that. And I knew her long enough, and I've known other people with borderline personality disorder, and I've known other people, plenty of people mentally ill, mentally ill myself. I know how that is, where the mental illness takes over, but she had remarkably good control of it. And if you weren't, a shitty older man taking advantage of her, then she didn't treat you like that, as far as as far as far I can tell. Not a single example of that. Those examples that we have of screen caps are her literally talking to human scum. And I think that anyone, if there's going to be plain, the blaming of people and talking about shit like that, I don't understand how you don't look at these older men preying on her and not get mad at them. Instead say, oh, she was mistreating men. It's, it's the most incel thing I've ever heard. Uh, the other thing that I want to say is that it is also, on the other hand, it's true. She made very bad decisions. Um, it's true that she was mentally ill. It's true that drugs heavily affected this. And it's true that I genuinely think she just didn't have much to do sometimes. And this was how she thought she was going to keep herself from being bored. I think that happens to a lot of people. But it is very true um, when you see these women on Twitter and Instagram saying, like, be careful around these guys. Some of them are making it out to be, you know, like men are scary, but some of them are genuinely saying, be careful with these people and keep yourselves safe. And that's absolutely true because ultimately she had had bad experiences with him before and kept hanging out with them. And I know that he had control over her through manipulation, probably through, through some amount of grooming and through those drugs. But ultimately when you know a guy is bad, you have to not hang out with them. This is not the first time that I've had friends of mine that go, oh, he's kind of like this, but, you know, I'm going to go see him anyway. You know, it's, you all have to keep yourselves safe. Yeah. Amen to that. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time out to explain your perspective on things. And I think it's important that people hear about it and get it, you know, and I'll get it out there. So thank you. And... No problem. Thank you. And I think that'll do it. Okay. Uh... Sorry about my sh